Okay, we will call to order the regular meeting of the Batavia City Council for Monday, March 6, 2023. And to begin our meeting, I'd ask that everyone please rise for a brief invocation to be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight as we enter this meeting, we are ever mindful of the many crises that have befallen our world, and certainly one of them is the high demands that have been placed on law enforcement and the American Fire Service in responding to a heightened degree of emergencies in all cities throughout the area and throughout the country. And we just ask that a special blessing to be showered upon each and every one of these men and women as they go about their vital missions in our country, and that may all be as well protected in their cities and villages as Batavia is by its own police and fire departments. Uh, tonight also, we want to remember those in our country who are serving on foreign soil in defense of the liberties of the United States of America, and we just ask that a special blessing be showered upon each and every one of these men and women as they go about their vital missions. As always, tonight we ask for vision and understanding and fellowship as the City Council discusses and votes on the issues on our agenda. And we know that each member of the Council is here to work and what in their own hearts and minds is in the best interest of the community of Batavia. Uh, we ask for all these blessings. Amen. Uh, if I pick here, uh, on Freeman, you want to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Sure. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. Liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, we move to item number three, which is the roll call. Miller. Rosado. Here. Beck. Here. Connolly. Here. Chancet. Here. Wolf. Here. Sulfa. Here. Barron. Here. Lehman. Here. Ayazi. Here. Malay. Here. Ewer. Here. Cerrone. Here. Vogelsinger. Here. 13 of 14 present, Your Honor. So we have the necessary quorum to conduct business tonight. Okay, moving to item number four, which is a reminder from my chair that we ask that if you're going to address us tonight that you come forward and use the podium and please speak clearly into the microphone because this is all being recorded and will be broadcast on BATV for the community to see and we want to make sure that it's heard. We've had some people over the years complained to us that the people get up to the podium and they can't hear what they're saying. So we try very hard to make that uh, requirement if you're going to speak. Okay, moving then to item number five, which are items to be removed, added, or changed on our tonight's agenda. Does anybody have anything? No, I don't. Okay, we'll move right along on that one. Moving then to item number six, which is tonight's presentation of the consent agenda. Alderman Chancet, are you available to present this, please? Your Honor, the consent agenda reads as follows. To accept and place on file, the Committee of the Whole Minutes for November 29th, December 13th, uh, 2022, and January 24th and January 10th, 2023. Historical Preservation Minutes for January 9th, 2023. December 2022 monthly financial reports and approvals the March 3rd 2023 payroll in the amount of $988,441.38 the accounts payable check register in the amount of $1,353,282.99 the city council minutes for February 6th and February 20th 2023 Resolution 23-43-R, authorizing a contract with MYS Incorporated for an amount not to exceed $128,694.29, which includes a 10% contingency amount for performing modification of Wilson Street at River Street. Um, resolution 23-42-R, authorizing a contract with Trans Systems Corporation uh, to perform Batavia Avenue Road Phase 1 Preliminary Engineering for not, not to exceed $110,483.
uh, ordinance uh, 23-07 conditional use permit for a Dave Hot Chicken drive through restaurant at 125 South Randall Road. Ordinance 23-08 amending the zoning map to add a, uh, a PUD overlay district uh, that is 125 South Randall Road uh, for Dave's Hot Chicken. A resolution 23-39-R approving a final plat of subdivision for 125 South Randall Road. On Resolution 23-41-R, approving an intergovernmental agreement between the City of Batavia and the Batavia Park District for the installation of fiber optic cable from the quarry, uh, or to the uh, quarry beach. Um, Your Honor, I would move that we approve the consent agenda as read. Second. Move by Alderman Chancet, second by Alderman Malay for the approval of the consent agenda presented and read. Anybody have any questions or comments? Kirk, please call the roll. Chancet? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Sulfa? Aye. Barron? Aye. Lehman? Aye. Ayazi? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. Vogelsinger? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Connolly? Aye. 13 uh, yes, no, no's, one absent. Senate agenda is approved by a vote of uh, 13 yes, one absent. Okay, moving then to item number seven, which are matters from the public for items that are not on our agenda. Do we have anybody this evening? Don't see anybody with that. Okay. Moving then to a nice piece of news we have, and that's the, the police chief is going to provide a recognition to Batavia officer Mike Walters, who is the winner of the 2022 Lou Spuler Kane County Officer of the Year Award. Chief. So for, for many, you may already know uh, Officer Walters. Uh, for those that may be newer on the council, this is uh, Officer Mike Walters. He is, uh, he is actually our longest tenured employee right now with the police department. Uh, just uh, celebrated his 32nd year uh, with us on January 7th. So Mike is a world of uh, knowledge and experience and uh, just wanted to make a couple of remarks uh, about Mike before getting into one specific incident, uh, which is uh, why he won the, the Lewis Spuler Award. Um, Mike is, uh, be, besides his experience, he's probably one of the most reliable employees that we have. Uh, literally just, he's a, an old school, pick up your lunch pail, go to work kind of guy. And uh, just very positive, exudes positivity, not only um, you know within the building um, and with his coworkers, but he's the kind of uh, officer that on the calls that he goes out on, takes that extra time, to attentively listen, uh, has patience to be able to uh, diagnose a situation, and you'll hear about that here in a second. You know, as well as uh, just the ability to to take his time and and make the right decisions. So, um, really pleased that uh, that he not only received this award, but kind of to give you an idea of uh, the last couple of years of some of the other successes that Mike has had. He was actually our 2021 officer, Batavia officer of the year, in-house officer of the year and then was nominated again uh, for the 2022 award and uh, was the honorable mention for that. So uh, 32 years and continuing to climb is, uh, is what he's doing. And uh, it's, it's a great role model for uh, all of uh, uh, us younger officers who are, are behind him. So uh, with that being said, I'm gonna get into uh, <laughs> uh, reading about this specific incident, um, which is uh, uh, why Mike was nominated for this award and, and then uh, ultimately received it. So. On Sunday, January 16th, 2022, at approximately 11, 11 a.m., Officer Mike Walters responded to a call for a domestic battery report where a subject was reporting that her boyfriend had choked her and was threatening to kill her. Officer Walters was the first officer to arrive and assess the scene. Officer Walters located a male subject holding a three-month-old baby. The male's hands were scraped and bloodied. The subject would not follow commands from Officer Walters to stay calm and hand the baby over, over to its mother. Officer Walters, knowing that trying to physically remove the baby could further escalate the situation and harm the child, intentionally stayed several feet from the male subject so that he would be close enough if an immediate rescue of the child were needed. Officer Walters learned that the male subject and his girlfriend had had an argument earlier in the morning. During the argument, the male subject choked his girlfriend while she was holding their three-month-old baby. The male subject then forcibly took the baby to another part of the house. The female subject walked to where the baby was in hopes of getting the child back. 
The male subject then choked the female again to a point where she lost consciousness for a short period of time. After regaining cognitive abilities, the female subject ran to a bathroom, locked the door, and called 911. The male subject then breached the bathroom door and choked the female subject for a third time and threatened to kill her again. The male subject would not release the baby over to anyone else in the household to include the subject's mother, father, or the baby's mother. The male subject remained very agitated while continuing to hold the baby. He threatened that if officers tried to arrest him, it wouldn't go well for the baby, for him, or for the officers. The male subject repeated that he was not giving up the baby and stated numerous times that he was going to do something that would make officers shoot him. Officer Walters continued a dialogue and built rapport with the male subject, who agreed to speak with crisis counselors by phone and then later actually in person as well. The counselors eventually came to the scene to try and facilitate the safe transfer of the infant. Officer Walters remained calm and persistent in their pursuit of trying to verbally de-escalate the situation. And after 74 minutes, the male subject finally released the baby to a relative. After the baby had been released and taken safely from the home, Officer Walters assisted in the arrest of the subject. The subject was ultimately charged with aggravated battery, domestic battery, endangering the life or health of a child and resisting obstructing a peace officer. Officer Walters displayed, a great, displayed great restraint, patience, and compassion in understanding that the offender was having a mental health crisis and the three-month-old baby was at great risk of being seriously harmed if, he were, if it were not for the actions and determinations, determination of Officer Walters, the outcome might have had grave consequences. As a result of his actions, Mike was nominated for the uh, Kane County Officer of the Year Award. On February 22nd, we attended a dinner uh, along with uh, Mike's uh, spouse, and uh, there were 24 nominations uh, from across the county uh, and some really, really good police work that's going on in our county as, as occurs every single year. And uh, there, one of the other nominees was also a Batavia officer as well. Um, Mike's story is, as you just heard me read it, incredible, um, incredible actions by, by Mike. And uh, so he was chosen uh, by an independent civilian panel as the 2022 Kane County uh, Police Officer of the Year. So congratulations, Mike. Thanks, John. Say, uh, please step up. You want? I do have a little bit I'd like to say. I'd like to thank Laura Newman and the City Council for having me here tonight and for the recognition. Um, I'd like to sh uh, thank my shift mates fellow officers and my, all my supervisors for all their help and support with this incident. Thank you for all the King County deputies who are present at the, at the scene to assist with this incident. I'd also like to thank, you my, thank my family, especially my wife, for always being there to support me. And I was glad I was be able to, to be at this incident to help bring the, the incident to a safe conclusion. It's always been an honor to work for the city of Batavia and the Batavia Police Department. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, Mike, on behalf of the City Council and the City of Batavia, I'd like to thank you for your 32 years, number one, of outstanding duty, but certainly this operation that you just participated in that the Chief just shared with us certainly speaks to your courage and your wisdom and your calm understanding and how to get a really bad moment turned into a halfway decent good moment. And uh, that's 30, 40 years from now, we can look back and see whoever this baby becomes has made it through a very trying moment. And without you standing there, that may not have been the case. So you really have made your difference in this world already. And I, I'm so pleased that Batavia can claim you as one of our very own because uh, your dedication to duty and your quick actions certainly make it strongly apparent that Batavia is truly blessed as a community to have police officers like yourself. So on behalf of the city council, I just want to publicly commend you and thank you and wish you the best in the future. I'm sure you're going to retire from us one of these days, regrettably, but you certainly have served with great honor and service to the community of Batavia and our town is a much better and grander and safer place because 32 years ago, I think I swore you in when you <laughs> got hired, 
Uh, we really got a good one in you, so uh, thanks for all you've done. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. What? You want me to come? I let the record reflect that Alderman Miller has entered the proceedings. Welcome. Uh, we'll move to item number nine, which is resolution 23-040, adoption of Batavia bike and pedestrian plan. Who's got this one? You know, I got that. Go ahead. So this is a culmination of uh, um, I know you're just saying oh, I can keep working Oops. and be at the meeting. Oh, that's nice. luckily for uh, until May. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that, <laughs> a culmination of uh, uh, efforts of uh, public meetings. This is an update to the uh, 2007 uh, bike plan, which is now known as uh, the City of Batavia uh, Bike and Pedestrian Plan. Uh, a working group was formed uh, that had uh, all the different stakeholders involved and uh, cannot stress enough the importance of uh, what this document means and uh, how the city will uh, need to use it moving forward and not uh, place it on the shelf. I certainly uh, turn this to the floor. Anyone that wants to make any remarks uh, about what was accomplished. Anybody on the council have anything you want to report or comment about? Alderman Beck? I'll just... Um say thanks for the to the council for supporting investing in the plan itself um, I think it lays out a lot of very easy um, achievable improvements to both our roadways our sidewalks and our intersections to make it as the the vision statement says um, make this place safe and comfortable for all users regardless of age ability and mode of transportation um, and <laughs> Sorry, I'm also very distracted. <laughs> um, and I, I just look forward to, I look forward to seeing this roll out. I look forward to um, seeing what improvements are made over the next 10 years and, uh, and just appreciate all the efforts to date, appreciate the group that worked on it very much. Anybody have any other comments they'd like to make? I had the opportunity the last couple of days to talk a couple of times with the police department about this and they're very supportive of it and think it's a good document. I think we are, myself and the police department is very much of the opinion that we're gonna have to take some stronger enforcement on bicycle riding in the downtown, especially on the sidewalks and specifically on the hills, both the east and the west sides. 
because uh, we've seen some stuff happen that's been some very near misses and potentially some very strong injuries that people could have had by walking out of a store on the West Wilson Street Hill specifically and almost getting hit by these folks that are flying down that street on their bicycle on the sidewalk. So uh, we may be writing some tickets, but that's just the normal course of business. But I just wanted to make that statement publicly as part of this, because overall this is a great plan and you know we're gonna try to fine tune it so we don't have mishaps or miscalculations and people getting hurt, so. Or do you wanna make some comments? I just wanted to make a few comments really to uh, thank our partners in all of this. Um, Primarily the, the consultants that we utilize, I think are among the best in our region at assisting <laughs> communities like ours in developing plans of action, not just plans of words. And so uh, the recommendations in this plan are very specific, uh, give us uh, some tremendous goals to accomplish together over the course of the next uh, 10 years. So uh, hats off to Active Transportation Alliance and Ride Illinois. Um, and then I'd also like to recognize our Batavia Bicycle Commission. Um, they were instrumental, really the, the, the big motivating force in us having a bike plan to begin with, a project that they started in 2005 and eventually culminated in our first bike plan of uh, 2007. I think a lot of the um, goals that they wanted to see accomplished between 2007 and where, where we are today in 2023, we really uh, didn't accomplish. But I'm, I'm very excited to be uh, working on this new plan that specifically has a lot of things that the Bicycle Commission has been saying for many years were necessary to improve the safety of biking and walking in our community. So hats off also to the uh, Bicycle Commission for their uh, great efforts in putting this together with us. Thank you. Anybody else in the council? Sure. Um, just because you brought up enforcement, I thought it was really uh, interesting on a, on a training that I was on many years ago. The, uh, the consultants that were presenting were from the Netherlands. Um, they had an office in the Netherlands and an office in North Carolina, and they had commented on the differences between working in the two in the two countries in the Netherlands uh, city streets like our downtown and neighborhood streets are not in the, the police officers do not enforce the speed limits in those areas their opinion is if cars are speeding in those in those regions that it's a design problem and it's the city's uh, responsibility to fix it's not an enforcement issue and I always thought that was so interesting and to compare with the level of safety on the roads over there compared <laughs> to the level of safety in the roads here in neighborhoods and downtowns it's a, a very different approach and I think it's a also a really strong responsibility on our part to make sure that we're making the safety improvements that are laid out in this document so that our roads are that safe as well anybody else I've had the opportunity to visit uh, the Amsterdam and the Netherlands uh, under a program sponsored by the German Marshall Foundation. I spent three weeks there. And one of the days of a government group, and one of the days we were there, we went through that bicycle whole operation of all the rules and the problems they have with it and whatever have you. It was very interesting. But they were saying that they they do have injuries and they don't really you know, have an immediate answer. They try to, they even were talking about, they were trying to come up with some idea that they could put something on the bicycle that would slow it down to a specific speed, but that wasn't going over too good with a lot of people. But, uh, so this is not something that's just talked about in the United States. They were actively discussing it there, but they, as you just said, they have a much bigger bicycle issue and population of bicycle riders than probably any place else in the world and in, in, in that area. So they really do have a way of getting around. But as they say, it's a cheap way to get around and they weren't spewing any fumes into the air and a whole bunch of other stuff. So they're they're kind of they were kind of sold on it. It was there in 1999. So that's been 24 years now. But I mean, they were they were very much into holding on to the bicycle riding as a principal national activity. Okay, anybody else on that one? So I guess we want to call the ordinance and adopt a 
Your Honor, Your Honor, I would call for adoption of Resolution 23-40, the option of the uh, Batavia Bike and Pedestrian Plan. Second. Moved by Alderman Chanzit, second by Alderman Beck for the approval of the adoption of the Batavia Bicycle and Pedestrian Plan. Any further discussion? Kirk, call the roll. Chanzit. Aye. Wolf. Aye. Sulfa. Aye. Barron. Aye. Lehman. Aye. Ayazi. Aye. Malay. Aye. Ewer. Aye. Sarone. Aye. Vogelsinger. Aye. Miller. Aye. Rosado. Aye. Beck. Aye. Connolly. Aye. 14 yes, no, no, none absent. Motion's approved. All right, moving to item 10, and there she's already moved in. Margaret Pro, the executive director and president of the Batavia Chamber of Commerce, is here to uh, give us the latest from the chamber. I had to keep things rolling. I figured I'd get in position. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me, giving me this opportunity to speak to you tonight. Uh, it's here. It's officially here. It's Restaurant Madness Week. We've been telling you for months that it was coming, and it's this week. So uh, I just wanted to ask you to invite your significant other to one of our 38 participating restaurants. Keep the love alive and support our local restaurants and save 20%. It started last night. And it goes through Thursday. I also want to let you know that if you have holiday bucks, the bonus bucks that the chamber donated during the holiday season, if you still have those, they expire March 31st. So use them, at our, use them during restaurant week uh, and um, make sure you spend those in our local community. We have over 100 businesses now accepting chamber bucks. Chamber bucks, by the way, are available all year long and be good, are in increments of $10 and can be given to anyone you love. I also want to let you know that the Chamber, again, is offering four Inspire scholarships to a BPS 101 high school seniors. We will be giving out uh, four $1,000 scholarships to, um, we're accepting the applications now through the end of the month. So uh, spread the word. That's a great program the Chamber is doing for, for our community. We also uh, have collected nearly 100, about 100 design ideas for our community flag. So the fun community, Batavia community flag design contest that we have has been a big success. The committee is going to get together this week and start trying to, uh, it'll be a difficult decision, but trying to decide which design is the best design. So look for more, informa more information about that later this month. Once the uh, winning design has been selected, we will let everybody know and we will make them available. We'll, we will make flags available three by fives and garden size flags uh, will be available for sale so everybody can display their community pride. Uh, I want to welcome the businesses that joined the Batavia Chamber this month. Charlie Fox's Pizzeria, Mary Bruno Team, Keller Williams Inspire, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Chicago, Plimsoll, BRH Fabrication, Imagined Entertainment. We spent a cold, blustery morning out there, Mayor, didn't we, while they were putting their truss in? Smarty Pants Cafe that we're doing a ribbon cutting for tomorrow. That'll be exciting. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Uh, Countryside Flower Shop Nursery and Garden Center. Diane Anderson, Baird and Warner Real Estate. H&M Cabinetry. Industrial Treasures. And Demo Barbecue. So welcome them. Please support them. Look for more information about each of these businesses on our chamber website. We have some really great events coming up. I would like to invite you to join us. We have a ribbon cutting ceremony, like I just mentioned, for Smarty Pants Cafe, 817 North Randall, tomorrow at 10 a.m. We have our Coffee and Co Commerce Morning Networking this Wednesday, March 8th, from 8 to 9 at Wilson Street Mercantile. Our Batavia Women in Business is hosting an after-hours networking event Thursday evening from 4.30 to 6.30 at K. Hollis Jewelers. Our partner charity is Suicide Prevention Services. We have networking it on Wednesday, March 15th from 4.30 to 6.30 at Fernando Street Kitchen. Our spotlight charity is Valley Sheltered Workshop, and the event is sponsored by Metronet. The State of the County Virtual Town Hall Meeting with Corinne Perog, our Kane County Board President, will be held March 17th from 11.30 to noon. You can uh, register for that and get the Zoom link on our website. We will have a ribbon cutting ceremony for Precisely Practical at the Chamber office on Tuesday, March 21st at 4.30. We will have a virtual webinar 
for the top 10 mistakes businesses make and how to avoid them. This webinar is being put on by Harriet Parker, our Illinois Small Business Development Center Manager. That will be Thursday, March 23rd at 11.30 to noon. We have our monthly Chamber Not-for-Profit Forum Wednesday, April 5th. It will be held at Fox Valley Hands of Hope in Geneva. That will be from 8 till 9.30. Our 2023 Economic Outlook Luncheon and Business Expo will be in Oak Brook. It's a multi-chamber event that we host annually from 10 to 1.30 on April 6th. Leslie McGranahan, the VP and Director of Regional Res Reserve Bank of Chicago, will present economic trends affecting businesses. Of course, our Inspire Celebration, our annual uh, community fun event where we honor the Citizen of the Year and the Oli Award winners, that will be held Thursday, April 27th at 6 p.m. at Revelry 675. Registration is open for that now, so please go online and, and sign up. I also want to give you a save the date for June 16th. Our annual golf, chamber golf outing will be Friday, June 16th. This year, we're going to move it to a 9 a.m. tee off. So it previously was 1 o'clock, so we thought we'd try doing it a little bit earlier this year. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I would like to thank Council for all the support they they are doing for our local community and for our businesses. Join us at the Chamber events to demonstrate the collaboration between the Chamber and the City Council in creating a vibrant and prosperous local economy. The Chamber continues to work closely with business organizations to create a welcoming and supportive environment for businesses to thrive. Check out the Chamber's website, bataviachamber.org, to register for our events, sign up for our newsletter, and find other pertinent information. Follow the Chamber on Facebook and Instagram to stay up to date. Uh, before I move and introduce my, my esteemed guest, does anybody have any questions for me? Any questions of Margaret? Okay, you know where to find me. <laughs> I'd like to introduce now Kathy Madlinger, a member of the board of the not-for-profit Batavia RSVP. The, mi the mission of Batavia RSVP is to provide services to residents of our community who are age 65 and older. The goal is to help seniors live independently and to maintain as high a quality of life as possible. We're lucky to have Batavia RSVP in our community. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Mayor, um, Council members, other guests. Um, as Margaret said, my name is Kathy Madlinger. I'm on the board of directors for Batavia RSVP, uh, a uniquely Batavia uh, not-for-profit. And as the uh, initials indicate, it, uh, it stands for actually Retired Senior Volunteer Program, but we serve um, seniors in the Batavia community. We are, uh, we've been here, it'll be 35 years this November. So um, we are made up of an entirely volunteer board, 12 uh, Batavia citizens, of which I am one of. Um, and we, what I'm here today is to either reacquaint you with Batavia RSVP, if you ha uh, have heard of us in the past or either introduce ourselves, but uh, mostly to um, ask for your help. Um, as I said, we, our target client base are um, seniors in the city, the township, or the Batavia Park District um, borders, I guess, I don't know, demographic map <laughs> outline. Um, uh, so we're looking for clients because uh, as we all know, we have birthdays and some of us who maybe weren't eligible for Batavia RSVP 35 years ago, may now be approaching. Um, second, we are looking for volunteers to assist our clients. And for that, you do not have to be 65 years old or even retired. We're looking for community members to assist our seniors um, in ways such as uh, mostly transportation needs for seniors who need to get to medical appointments but do not have the ability um, to transport themselves. Um, and then finally, we have our signature uh, program, which uh, we, we're trying to find clients for. Uh, we are unique in that we provide actual financial assistance to needy seniors in our community for prescription medication assistance. Um, we've expanded that program to include um, eye exams and um, dental exams through a partnership with local optometrist and um, dentist. And currently we serve about 55 seniors in the area, um, up to about $4,000 of financial assistance a year. So it is, a, it is a very worthwhile program and we receive our funding from individuals uh, throughout the community, as well as the Pavia United Way, uh, the Furnace Foundation, um, the Rotary Club, 
the township. I know I'm missing somebody. It's in the brochure. Um, but for more information, um, you can call our offices at Batavia RSVP. The number's on the little uh, jar opener that I've given you. It's 630-406-9996. Uh, or on our website, BataviaRSVP.org. And again, we're looking for potential clients, and we're also looking for potential volunteers. Um, if you have any questions after the meeting, I'd be happy to answer them for anybody. And I have to give one more shout out. We um, have been blessed. We do not have an office of our own. We have shared, I think, the space behind here that is now being pounded on. <laughs> and currently, we are um, blessed with a space uh, at the Batavia Fire Department. So we're really, really um, grateful. We, before, the, before the pounded on space, we were at the Park District. So we're very thankful for the support we do get from um, uh, throughout all elements of the Batavia community. So thank you. Thank you. Any questions? I certainly remember 35 years ago when you started. And uh, there was a number of your board members who we're kind of scratching our heads wondering how this was all going to work. But the folks that have stepped in then and who are still continuing, different people, but the people that you attract to be on your board have been phenomenal and they really have understood the issues and understood the finances and the lack of it and the, the, where to go for it and understand what the needs of the community are. And certainly one of the high growth areas in Batavia in the last few years has been the senior citizen population. Uh, I tell the story that when the Culver's restaurant just opened up this past week, when the owner came to talk about coming to Batavia, she asked for a meeting with Laura Newman and myself. And she walks in the room and she says to me, so can you tell me how many senior living communities you have in this town? And I said, six. And she says, well, that answers all my questions. And she says, we'll be here. And they didn't have a spot yet, but that was what was because they pride, pride themselves on being a restaurant that's attractive for senior citizens and the menu and support for grandchildren and all this other stuff that they've got written into their corporate philosophy. So uh, I just think we're very fortunate to have the senior citizens and the number of them that your group has encouraged to go out into the community and volunteer at the library or sitting at a table at some of the events over the summer months and doing different stuff. Uh, We've gotten our good use out of a good number of senior citizens in this town because of your organization. So I'm happy you're in the building. I took great pride in seeing in your brochure here, you got us addressed right here that's, on the That's front where page. we still get our mail. Right. We still get the mail here. And I guess I'd be remiss if I didn't put in one more shout out. We have, um, through the, uh, I guess, the Tavia Enterprises sponsors at the farmer's market, the um, community tent uh, every Saturday. And we have the first slot on May 20th. So when the farmer's market opens and you're strolling through, please stop by and see us. And I probably will have more jar openers. So <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right, uh, going to 11, the administrator's report, or? You know, I'd like to start out by pointing out how many uh, synergies and connections and what a community Batavia is. And it has to do with Margaret and Kathy. Um, you know, there's, there's one person kind of who is shared amongst our two organizations, and that's John Dillon. John Dillon still works for the, the city in a temporary, uh, a part-time capacity because he's one of the few people with the skills to be able to um, take care of our uh, very proud collection of windmills here in this city. But um, John has served on the board for RSVP for many, many, many years and has recruited other board members. Um, tie in with the chamber. John is being honored as the citizen of the year at this year's Inspire Awards for the chamber on April 27th. Um, the Batavia Rotary Club, I'm the president this year. Margaret's going to be president of that club in two years, supports RSVP. And so it's just, you know, kind of a great example of how uh, many different parts of our community collaborate on um, issues that, that serve different uh, contingencies within our community. So I'd just like to thank you guys for all that you do. 
Um, several things I'd like to mention here today. Early voting um, is going to begin here in March at City Hall, believe it or not, despite the fact that we have all this construction going on. Um, we still want to be a place where people can um, come to vote early. And that will be the weeks of the 20th to the 24th and the 27th through the 30th from 9 a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. And you'll use this uh, south entrance um, door here. Also coming up is um, uh, the week of March 20th and 27th, kind of coinciding with early voting, is um, the pickup of yard waste with and no stickers are needed for those two weeks. So if you get out there and do some early spring cleaning, you put stuff out uh, the week of March 20th or March 27th, no stickers are going to be needed. After that, stickers are required and the um, yard waste pickup continues through November 30th. Um, and then also I wanted to mention that uh, we are having an event that the police department is hosting called Coffee with a Cop, and that will be at our new Starbucks located on Randall Road on March 23rd. There'll be two times during that day um, where you can have coffee with a cop from 10 to 2 or from 4 to 6. It's not really a specific program, just a chance to meet some of the uh, uh, officers that serve in the community and for them to have conversations and, and answer any questions that the community might have. And then also, uh, lastly, I just wanted to mention that this week is Severe Weather Preparedness Week in Illinois, and March 6th through March 10th this week. Um, but tomorrow is going to be the first Tuesday of the month on March 7th, and where we ordinarily um, have the tornado sirens sounding for two minutes, we are going to sound them, uh, along with other communities in Illinois, for seven minutes. And the purpose is to encourage people to practice tornado preparedness by seeking proper shelter. And so it gives people a, an opportunity to make those plans before they need to. And that's all that I have, unless anybody has any questions for me. Questions, Laura? Thank you. Thank you. Do we have other business from the city council tonight? Uh, going to the mayor's report, uh, I just want to emphasize a couple of things. I had several conversations with Laura today, and it appears that we've gotten all of our necessary right-of-ways and all of our financing in line to put up the traffic signal slash railroad signal at Perry and Wilson. And I guess we don't know for sure exactly when we're going to do this, but the money and the, the easements and the contracts are all in place to, to start to do it. And uh, I think that's, I, I remember sitting in a meeting in Chicago and the state transportation department cited some places where they needed to have a stoplight and a railroad crossing and Batavia was one of them near the top of the list because Wilson Street traffic numbers are pretty high. And to have an unguarded railroad crossing on two legs of that was a no-no. And so they were very pushy about that. And they were, I will tell you, they were instrumental in us getting the nice federal grant that we got to do that work. So uh, I think I have a lot of people in Batavia scratch their head and say, why do you need to do that? Well, it's more of a rail crossing safety thing probably than anything else because the way the railroad crosses that intersection up there, it's not at the intersection. It's... 100 feet to the south on Prairie and 100 feet to the east on Wilson. So you can literally get cars trapped between the stop sign and the railroad train that's then trying to go through. So they don't think that's good at all. We need to get the cars stopped before the train gets there and get the cars out of the intersection. As I understand the plan, when a train comes, and they're not very frequent, as you know, uh, for the time that the train's there, the, all four legs of the intersection will be red. So nobody will be moving no place other than that train to get it through. Uh, today I came down Prairie Street on my way down here, and there was a train at 
I don't know, 9.30 in the morning, I guess it was. So I sat there and counted the cars and with the engines and whatever, there were 10 cars in the train and that was a pretty good sized train for Batavia to have at any time of the day nowadays because basically they're running from the Burlington over to someplace in our industrial park or West Chicago's, but they can't hook onto the Northwestern as I'm told anymore. So they all, whatever goes over has to come back on the Burlington. And so that's the way that whole thing works there. And uh, so that's just a, a, a part of Batavia that's been there since about the very beginning of Batavia. That was uh, Judge Lockwood got the railroads in town in about 1853. So you can put in, do the numbers on that. And that's, you know, almost 175 years or whatever it is that we've, we were one of the first towns in the area to have a railroad train. And it really worked our benefit. Number one, it during the Great Chicago Fire in 1871, Batavia became a great haven for mining limestone because we had 11 quarries on South River Street, starting about at Laurel and going down. And we had two quarries down where the quarry park now is. So we had a lot of need for hauling limestone away. And about the only way you're going to haul limestone in 1872 was to put it on a railroad car because put it on a wood wagon being pulled by horses, that's not going to go very far. So we had that going for us, and the story goes that it was kind of a rough business to begin with because there weren't a lot of strong people in town to get down there and beat on that stone. So somebody in the, in the limestone business got the idea, well, let's go to Scandinavia and run some ads in the newspaper and say, if you move to America and come to Batavia, Illinois, we'll build you a house and we'll give you a nice job and you'll make some good money working in these. And it, apparently it worked because last year, as you know, I go out and give proclamations to various things for honoring. And last year, both the Bethany Lutheran Church, which was the quote unquote Swedish Lutheran Church in town, and the Swedish Covenant Church, which is the one that's out on West Main Street now, just going as Batavia Covenant, they were both formed in 1872 to take on all these Scandinavian folks that were moving into Batavia. And, uh, and I've attended both of the 150th birthday ceremonies in both of them. And in both instances, the pastors credited uh, the churches and the Scandinavian solicitation as the reason why to this day we have all these SON last name people in town, the Andersons, Johnsons, Nelsons, Bensons, Andersons. Uh, they're all, and many of them stayed here and it became a generational thing. And so many of the people with those last names have their ancestors going back to Batavia in 1872. And we got two churches that claim it, so it certainly had some credence to it. So I just think that history is so wrapped around ourselves with the things that we're doing here that we probably have one of the proudest chapters of local ground history in the area. And as you know, we did get a, a grant last year from the Dunham Foundation for $75,000. And right now we've got a committee of myself and Laura, and we've got the Batavia Library and the Batavia Historical Society. And Laura, am I forgetting anybody? We have a committee that's meeting, and we are making out history signs that we're going to put around Batavia. And there are a couple of them, one's going to be probably right outside the door here, and it's going to tell the story about how in this room, in the 1960s, there was a company that was a division of Dunbar Capital that was called DK Aerospace. And in this room, they made the fuel line that was in the rocket that landed on the moon in 1969. So that, that's a pretty impressive accomplishment. And then we've got a, I think it's kind of an entertaining story. Uh, up at Batavia Avenue and Wilson Street, we have a situation there where in 1919, a military convoy was convened to go from Washington, D.C. to San Francisco to explore the route of the proposed Lincoln County, Lincoln, Lincoln Highway going from one side of the country to the other. And so they put this military convoy together of 62 vehicles, and I think it was 179 military guys. It took them 62 days to go from Washington, D.C. to San Francisco, but they did it. But when they got to it, this thing came uh, down route, what today is Route 30 through Chicago Heights, 
and they stayed the night there, and the next day they got up, and their goal was to get to DeKalb, and they got there, but it took them 10 and a half hours to go from Chicago Heights to DeKalb in this convoy. So one of the things that slowed them down was they got down to Mooseheart. Mooseheart had just opened, and so they had a big ceremony there to show the kids the military vehicles and that. So when they left Mooseheart, they started up the hill that's down there, still there, but the hill that was there then was much steeper than the hill that's there now. They've pandered that thing down so it's not as steep as it used to be. They took these 62 military vehicles up the hill and they got them to the top of the hill and it was just one big cloud of steam because all of them had overheated and water had all shifted and everything else. So they lumbered it up Batavia Avenue and they got up to Batavia Avenue and Wilson Street. The city's public works director by the name of Allie Perry heard this was happening and he came over and told him, come up to Batavia Avenue and Wilson, we got a horse horse drinking trough that's connected to the city water system. And I'll turn that on and we'll give you all the water you need to get to all these military vehicles replenished. So they did that. So this is a big traffic, not a, you know, not a lot of traffic then, but you had horses being pull, pulling carriages and you had a few automobiles and you had everybody standing there looking at it. So one of the military guys in the convoy gets out of the convoy, he's a lieutenant colonel, and he gets out in the middle of the intersection and he starts directing traffic. And so he was out there for 45 minutes to an hour. Nobody's quite sure how long it was, but he got them all organized and they all went up the river uh, and they went up to Geneva and they got up to the corner where the little traveler now is and they turned on that street and went out to DeKalb because that was then the main street going out to DeKalb. Well, today is South Street. Anyway, when they left, somebody said, did anybody get that guy's name that was in the middle of the intersection? And somebody did have it, and his name was Lieutenant Colonel Dwight D. Eisenhower. So he stood in the middle of that intersection. Well, then the sign's going to go on to say that on October 25th, 1960, during the presidential campaign, John F. Kennedy came to Batavia in a, in a caravan that started up in, well, it started up in uh, Libertyville at Adlai Stevenson's farm and then went down and went to Barrington and then came over and got on Route 31 and just went through every town on Route 31 from uh, Carpentersville on down to Aurora. When he got to Batavia, they had let the kids out of the high school, and Sam Rattolo had let the kids out of Louise White, and the principal over at McQueen had let his kids out, so there was about a 1,000 kids standing there. And so John F. Kennedy comes, and so he wasn't originally scheduled to stop, but he saw all these kids standing there and all these people, so he stopped and he gave a speech for a minute and 43 seconds. And what's ironic about it is, is that where he gave his speech and where Eisenhower stood in the intersection is probably less than 40 feet, 40 feet apart. And, you know, Eisenhower is the one that is credited with starting the U.S. Space Administration. And Kennedy, although, as you know, he got assassinated, he was the one that put the plan on the table that we should land a man on the moon before the end of the 1960s, and that was a reach. So, I mean, there was some significant history right there with all those two guys coming to this town 41 years apart and both doing something almost at the same spot in the downtown. So we're going to tell stories. We got a cute one for Bellevue about Mary Todd Lincoln and we got some for the churches that are on Batavia Avenue and uh, we've got some other different stories. We're going to have a few signs literally all around town but I think people and they're all going to be as part of the deal they're all going to be copied and shown on a computer program so that anybody, any place can sit down and look at the sign and look at what it's saying. And we'll probably take a little bit of the background of the place and probably show the inside of this room as it is now and talk about what happened there. That won't be on the sign, but probably on the computer program. But it's a fun thing, but I think it's something that we should be very, very proud of. So anyway, that's my report for the night. Uh, and I guess now we need a motion to go into executive session for the purposes of discussing some brief litigation. So Sorry. moved. Moved by, who moved it? Sofa, second by Conley. Kirk, call the roll for executive session. Sofa. Aye. Barron. Aye. Lehman. Aye. Ayazi. Aye. Malay. Aye. Ewer. Aye. Cerrone. Aye. Vogelsinger. Aye. Miller. Aye. Rosado. Aye. Beck. Aye. Connolly. Aye. Chansett. Aye. Wolf. Aye. 
14, yes, no, no, none absent. All right, we will go into